Hi. What if I were to tell you that you would no longer have unlimited access to air? Would you be happy about that? Would you be happy paying for bottled or canned air like the sick do right now because they need oxygen in purer form than you can get in the air? I'm guessing that most of you, except for the vampires and zombies, would say that you would be very, very unhappy about having to pay for air or not having air at all. <laughs> I would agree with you. I would not want to be in a position where I had to pay for air or suffer with heavily polluted air. But there are countries uh, where there are cities um, all over the world where air has started to become a commodity due to pollution. But that's not what I want to talk about today. What I do want to talk about today is water. What if I said the same thing about water? Now you may be thinking, well, all I have to do is turn on my water faucet in my kitchen or my bathroom or outside and I have fresh water. Yes, you may, you may not. Uh, when I lived in Indonesia, during the dry months of the year, there were areas of Indonesia where people had to walk several miles to get to a well so they could fill up their water bottles and take them back home. And this happens in many places around the world, especially where water is relatively scarce, where there are deserts and stuff like that. Um, but that is more of a natural problem sometimes. Uh, sometimes it is man-made. Like for, for example, the Colorado River is used so heavily uh, in America for uh, various uh, cities like Denver and Los Angeles um, that it is almost dry by the time it reaches the border with Mexico. Is that fair for the Mexicans? I would say no, it's not. Uh, but that's what's happening. And it's not the only river that dries up before it gets to the end of its natural uh, conclusion. So that's that's it though, right? I mean, that's that's the whole problem is, is we uh, drink too much, we flush too much, we uh, clean our cars too much, uh, and so on and so forth, right? Well, actually, no. Um, that amount of personal use is only a small piece of the pie of the available water. Now, just to give you um, a frame of reference, 99% approximately of the Earth's water is not usable. Okay, 97% of it is salt water. To produce fresh water from salt water is an extremely expensive process. Now, I'm sure there are Somebody eventually is going to come up with a solution to for desalination of water. But until that happens, 97% of the water that we have on Earth isn't available to us. 2% of the water is fresh water that we can't use because of pollution or because it's very difficult to get at. So that leaves us with 1%. 1% doesn't sound like much. And when you think about the fact that we've got almost 8 billion people, anybody who says the planet can sustain 15 billion people or even 10 billion people is certifiably crazy, don't you think? Now, the majority of water usage goes to two things, industry and agriculture. Now, when I say agriculture, I mean both farming and ranching, okay? So just to give you a little bit of a frame of reference, if you want uh, to know the footprint of soybeans, uh, to grow soybeans to the point where they can be harvested, you need about 216 gallons. In comparison, corn needs 108 gallons. Now, if we look at ranching, pork takes 576 gallons to produce a pound. Okay, that's what I'm talking about here. We're measuring this by pounds. Okay, so that's more than double what it takes for soy, and that's 
owe more than five times what it takes for corn. Now, don't all go jumping on the bandwagon for corn because there are drawbacks to eating a lot of corn. Like, it doesn't have um, a lot of the nutrients you need and it's high in sugar. And if you're like me, because of lifestyle, because of age, and so on and so forth, I now have high tri triglycerides and I have to avoid eating lots of things like corn and other enjoyable stuff. But pork isn't even the big problem. Beef takes 1,799 gallons per pound of beef. Okay, so that's five times plus a bit what it takes to produce pork and gosh what is that like a huge number when it comes to the the uh agricultural produce you know even um even things like tomatoes and stuff like that none of them require huge amounts of water so that makes it great yeah we should all just become vegetarians right well, yes and no. Uh, we do need vitamin D. Uh, we do need, uh, which comes from the sun. So you should be getting outside at least 15 minutes a day, preferably in the morning or in the evening when the sunlight is coming at an angle into your, your atmosphere. Um, but we also need what the B complex vitamins and the B vitamins tend to come from animal sources. So, now you're thinking, well, I should just eat more fish. Well, that's great. Fish is very, very good for your health, but there's one small problem. We keep overfishing. At one point, the cod, uh, the cod industry had to shut down because there just weren't enough cod fish to continue to fish them. And that has happened with many other types of fish as well. And some of them have not recovered. Some of them are just gone. And some of them are still out there in large numbers. But if everybody switches from beef and chicken and pork and goat and lamb and um, turkeys, and I assume some of you out there are still eating geese and pigeons and stuff, well, what's going to happen? We're going to overfish our fish to the point that we won't have fish to rely on. And sure, we can harvest fish from the ocean, and that requires no water, right? Mm -mm, wrong. Harvesting fish from the ocean still requires water because they have to freeze the fish in ice. Where does ice? What is ice made of? Water. And water uh, is sometimes used to pack fish, especially tuna, which is you know the preferred way to pack tuna and other fishes uh, is water because it's not going to uh, be as bad for our health as using oils or syrups, um, which I hope isn't happening but so we we can't just move all of our meat needs to scouring the oceans and seas for them it just isn't feasible because we eat and we also waste way too much i mean large amounts of fish that we harvest from the ocean end up in cat food and dog food and yes i love cats and dogs and all the other animals that that eat food <coughs> like made of fish <coughs> However, we have limited resources. So, you know, Mexico City was going to uh, shut off their water supply indefinitely because the usage of water by the 22 million residents of Mexico City was so high that they had no choice. They were draining the aquifers. Now, for those of you who don't know what an aquifer is, an aquifer is an underground reservoir, a natural reservoir of water that has built up there over millennia. So they were the 22 million people were not only using whatever uh, surface sources of water there were. And remember, Mexico City, um, it used to be surrounded by a lake back when the Aztecs had it. But then the Spanish drained that lake out because it was more convenient to get rid of the water and have more land than to actually think, gosh, maybe we'll need that water someday. So all that water got thrown away. And all the natural uh, benefits of having that lake around Mexico City was gone as well. And the Army Corps of Engineers did the same thing in the uh, northern Everglades. So 
they've been using their surface lakes and rivers. They've also been draining the aquifers. And it's to the point where <laughs> Mexico City no longer has water supporting the land under it, and the land is sinking. Yeah, it's actually visible. There are photographs you can see where there's an actual a line of buildings, okay? And instead of a, st a straight line, you can actually see this dip where the land is sinking in that area. So <laughs> they're destroying their own property, and uh, uh, they are draining their aquifers, which will take a long time. Plus, everything's paved, so water that falls on rain, uh, sorry, in the form of rain, uh, in Mexico City, they actually get more rain than London does. But because all that water hits asphalt and cement and buildings, instead of flowing down into the aquifers under the city, it just drains off to somewhere else, which means Mexico City doesn't benefit from it. Now, there are ways to combat that. You can open up areas and uh, dig small holes into the earth to help absorb the water. You can redesign streets so that the, the water goes in under the streets and goes back down into the aquifers. You can also use uh, special roofs that can catch and save the water for you. There is an actual an island where all of the houses do that. And um, so it is, it is possible. Obviously, you need to use specific kinds of materials that aren't going to poison the water that you're drinking, but you can do it. And in addition to all that, Mexico was declaring, or Mexico, Mexico City was declaring that they were going to shut off the water. Well, when the government started saying that, people started to listen. They became scared. And so people started to reduce their water consumption. Okay. They actually pushed the date back again and again and again and again in 2018. And finally it got pushed back to 2019. And as far as I know, they still haven't shut off the water. Why? Because the Mexicans reduced their water usage in Mexico City by half. As a result, that water didn't get turned off. I mean, can you imagine what would happen to a city of 22 million people if they hadn't cut their water usage? Now, what can we as people do? Well, obviously, you can buy high-efficiency water shower heads. You can buy uh, low, uh, low water toilets that um, use less water for peeing, so you have the double buttons, um, and more water for pooping uh, that use higher pressure so that the water will flush down the, the stuff without stuff yeah uh, well, without using as much water you can um, instead of growing lawn which doesn't benefit you and creates more work for you you can grow gardens on your land you can plant trees on your land and that will save money and it also save time um, you can also choose to change your lifestyle look at how much water is being used to produce a product. Now, also look at the source of the food that you're buying. For example, are you buying alfalfa from Southern California? If you are, Southern California is essentially a, a desert or desert-like area, and they need huge amount of water uh, from the Colorado River and other sources in order to grow that alfalfa. So, hey, if that is is the source if you're buying food from any source that is de a desert you should stop because that's totally screwing up the environment totally wasting um, the water that's needed they should be growing in fertile areas not in dry areas you should also encourage uh, farmers and, and the farming corporations to invest in better agri um, irrigation instead of flooding fields. Um, just use the most efficient system of water distribution for the crops. And finally, and most importantly, you should reduce your intake of meat. Now, I know this may come as a shock to some of you and may some of you are going to grumble and groan, but you don't need to eat meat every day.
And you certainly don't need to have a huge portion of meat every day. In fact, let's break it down a little bit for you. There are definite health benefits to reducing your caloric intake. Okay, People who re consume less food um, are less likely to get food-related illnesses. And I'm, here I'm not talking about food poisoning. I'm talking about things like stroke and heart disease and diabetes and, and gout and um, high uh, triglycerides and high cholesterol and all that stuff. You can also um, not only look at that, you can also look at if you are from your baby years up until around the age of 25, you're going through a lot of growth. Your brain and your um, finishes growing around the age of 25, more plus or minus. Um, your wisdom teeth come in and so on and so forth. So that is the prime time when people need meat. But even then, you don't need huge amounts of meat. You certainly don't need more um, than a, you know, a small amount, a reasonable amount. And when I say a reasonable amount, I don't mean a, a one pound burger. Uh, okay, that's not a reasonable amount. That's a lot. You can say that if you want to have a meat every day during that time period of your life, then, you know, maybe uh, one, one small portion of meat, maybe a quarter of a pound at most, uh, preferably less, is more than sufficient and you're better off avoiding beef and even pork and other red meats. Why? Well, it's really quite simple because they need a lot more meat than if you're raising, say, chickens um, or fish. Um, you can then also look at are you male or female and I'm sorry I can't discuss uh, the intersex categories because that's way more complicated than the scope of this video you're going to have to if you're in one of those categories where say you have um, androgyny or something like that you're going to have to look at what your body's needs are and make a decision based on that anyways if you are a female you need more meat than men do until you finished men, uh, menopause. So men, after around the age of 25, you really don't need meat every day. In fact, a portion or two per week is plenty for men after that stage. For women, on the other hand, you do need a regular uh, an amount. And I don't know exactly how much, I, so I'm just going to say talk to your doctor. It does vary from woman to woman. If you've got endometriosis, you may need more. Um, I'm not really an expert on that. All I can tell you is, is women who are menstruating need meat to replace the lost iron. Um, men who are regularly donating blood will need potentially more meat than men who donate do not donate blood regularly. Um, in addition to that, for men and women who are in a job that requires large muscles, you will have to consume more protein. Now, protein doesn't necessarily have to come from meat. You can get protein from soybeans. You can pro get protein from eggs, although I would not recommend lots and lots of eggs because the cholesterol count is, is relatively high. And I don't care about the propaganda that came out about eggs on, on Oprah with Dr. Oz and that guy who wrote about the book about eggs. Um, eggs are not something you should be eating lots of. Okay, I'm sorry. Just being honest here. So, um, you also need to look at what you're buying in another way. Like, for example, Mo uh, the uh, Constellation brands, they make Corona beer and Modelo beer, um, which Corona lately has become a very famous beer. Uh, they have opened up or are, are opening up a new factory in Mexicali. Now, Mexicali nor traditionally was an area that was fed by the Colorado River, but again, that has pretty much dried up. So even the, the traditional farmers in Mexicali are struggling to maintain their farms. And in some industries, they've lost their farms or are in the process of living and seeing their farms. In some other areas, like where avocados are grown, 
uh, entire industry uh, farms are just being lost. Uh, like down in, I think it's uh, Chile, I think it is. They grow a lot of uh, uh, avocados there. And there's a huge problem with water rights and stuff uh, to the point that some farmers are being pushed out of the business because other farmers are taking more water than is fair. Um, so, but anyways, uh, Constellation Brands is building this giant factory in Mexicali. And the people don't want it there because they realize that the government of Mexico has not only guaranteed Constellation Brands can have that location, but is guaranteeing that they're going to get the water they need to produce beer. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, so what? I mean, beer is a bottle of water, uh, water with, you know, the other stuff in it, right? No, it takes all the water necessary to produce the crops that are used for the beer. Plus, it takes a whole bunch of other things. There is wastewater that is produced in the beer process. And so one bottle of beer takes many, many gallons to produce. Um, and we're talking about an, a very arid area where they're going to be taking water away from the citizens. Now, imagine if you were in an area and a company came in and said, hey, we're going to start producing in your area. And, oh, in the case of Constellation Brands, they're going to have 750 permanent jobs. Now, if you think about the number of people that live in that area, probably not going to be very helpful for the economy. Um, and certainly in terms of water availability, it's going to be horrible if the water is going to be sucked up to make beer. There are other countries where companies like Coca-Cola are have water rights and uh, it's cheaper to buy soda than it is to buy a bottle of water. So people can choose to get fresh water to drink um, or they can drink soda. And obviously when you drink a lot of soda, you put yourself at risk for things like diabetes. So getting back to the point here, when you see a company coming in, <clears throat> Check and see if they're going to get the rights to your water. Because when companies start getting control of the things that we need to live. Now, I don't mean houses, okay? Houses, you don't actually need to live. I mean, for thousands and thousands of years, humans lived without hot houses. Yes, it certainly is a lot better than living out in the wild on, under a tree or something like that. But it is not a requirement for life. Air water and food those are basic requirements without which you will not survive so i'm going to tell you this right now if you see companies wherever you live and they're trying to snap up water rights or air rights you should be fighting them tooth and nail and certainly don't support constellation brands as long as it's building a factory in a place where the people who need the water aren't going to get the water anymore and don't support other industries either that are doing the same thing i hope you'll think very carefully about this and if you'd like to know a little bit more um, netflix has a series called explained and there is an episode it's about 15 minutes long about water usage so but things that you can do again you can look at how much water is being used to produce what you're eating. Start choosing things that require less water. You can, uh, you can you try, if you're allowed to in your city, to collect rainwater. There are cities that limit it or don't allow it for whatever reason, um, but see if you can collect rainwater. Um, you can start or join an organization that uh, works on protecting the rights for water and, and uh, air. Um, and do keep in mind that if water usage were valued for the indispensable thing that it is, that food would become extremely expensive and a lot of industries would just have to shut down. There, it would not be likely that in most areas there, there would be beer and wine and stuff like that anymore because it's just too, it would become too costly for them to remain in business. So look at your consumption, choose wisely because you may be living in a city that is experiencing a water shortage already, and not just because of a drought. You may be in an area 
where they're running out of water. I know that there were parts of the Middle East where they were digging, they were digging wells into aquifers and using those wells to grow food. But guess what happened? Those wells eventually ran dry because the aquifers were drained and they get very little water in those areas. So there is no way to continue running those farms. And you can actually look from uh, at satellite pictures and you can see areas where there are these giant circles where there used to be farms and there aren't anymore. Um, so please think about the future because if we don't start thinking about the future and making wise purchasing decisions and um, that force businesses to conform to the needs of not just humans desires but also the needs of humans needs and the planet's needs we are going to really screw ourselves and no water world will never ever happen it'll be more likely that we'll end up in a world that is a desert if we don't change our ways and as you well know, a desert supports far less life. So you can say goodbye to that 8 billion. And people, this is not about politics. This is not about religion. I'm not trying to suppress any group. I'm trying to help every group. So please don't uh, misunderstand what I'm saying here. I'm telling not just one group. I'm telling every group. One of the best things you can do to help, aside from what I've already described, is have fewer children. I know, I know, you love children. I have two kids myself. But the more kids you produce, the bigger the population becomes, the faster it gets bigger, and the faster our resources are used up. So please be wise. Be good shepherds of the earth. Thank you very much for listening.